so hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new video and in this i will cover problem c that is mark and his unfinished essay from round 807 i will also make a video on problem d so stay tuned for that as well so let's start with problem c so in the problem we have been given a string uh, let's say example then we do some operations on it right uh, so let's say we do operation c1 net we do operation c1 on index l1 and r1 for example let's say they these are 2 and 4 then we will copy the substring from character 2 to 4 it will copy this and add it here right we will add it here let's say then we do some operation c2 again uh, on some index let's say l2 comma r2 let's say we do it on 7 comma 9 so it is the following substring right exa and we will copy it here and similarly we will keep on doing operations in the end we have been given some queries in each query we have been given some index and we have to tell the letter that is present to given index that is we have to if we have been given index we just need to tell s of index right now it is not possible to create the whole string using operations uh, right because uh, the string will grow exponentially for example if you have something like let's say uh, abc then we do some operations on the whole string we will uh, again append abc to the back then we will do operation c2 this is c1 then we will do some operation c2 and append the whole string again right something like this then we do operation c3 and append this whole string again right as you can see the string is going exponentially so it is not possible to like uh, recreate the whole string you have to do something smarter to find the index so what smarter can we do here let's see that uh, now you know uh, you know every operation right and you know on which indices you are applying the operation so like basically you can find the range of every operation what i mean by that is let's say you have your string example right you do some operation c1 it uh, and it will be l1 comma r1 right you do operation c1 on index l1 comma r1 so now you know that your length of this block will be how much r1 minus l1 plus 1 right you know index of this was n index of this will be how much this will be n plus r1 minus l1 plus 1 so now you know that all your letters from n plus 1 up to all your letters from n plus 1 up to n plus r1 minus l1 plus 1 were made using operation 1 right similarly you can find the same thing for operation 2 right you can keep a c2 here l2 r2 right the length of the following operation will be how much r2 minus l2 plus 1 so here it will be how much uh, n minus r1 minus l1 plus 1 plus r2 r2 minus l2 plus 1 right so all your letters from this index to uh, this index to this index were made using operation 2 so using this you can uh, find the range of every operation and the number of uh, letters that are made using the following operation so now let's try to answer the question or query for some index x right? so let's say you have given some index x and you, you want to answer the query for it so how can you do that obviously x will be made using some operations right x will be made using some operations and uh, as we know the range of every operation that is the indices that the operation is creating we can easily find which operation is creating index x so the first step is if we have been given some indexes we, we want to find the operation that made index x right so let's start with the diagram again we have been given some example and point of this is n then we have some operation c1 of index l1 comma r1 and point of this is n plus r1 minus l1 plus 1 and then we have my operation c2 this is l2 comma r2 and range of this is n plus r1 minus l1 plus 1 r2 minus l2 plus 1 and so on we have some index 3 now we want to find which operation made index x
how can we do that so for that we can like easily start from the last operation we can easily start from the last operation and like keep comparing the indices right we know the left index and we know the right index right so we can just check if x is lying be between these indices right and if x is lying between these indices then x was made using the following operation now for example let's say our x was made using operation c3 then our x will obey the following condition our x will be greater than n plus r1 minus l1 plus 1 r2 minus l2 plus 1 next is less than equal to n plus r1 minus l1 plus 1 r2 minus l2 plus 1 and r3 minus l3 plus 1 right so our x follows the following condition so we we can easily say that our x is lying uh, in the section c3 right that is it was made using operation 3 now we know that uh, now that we know that it was made using operation 3 and we know that operation was operation 3 was done on l3 and r3 right so we know we copied some section from the previous string that is this section l3 comma r3 and we copied it into our section c3 so now that, now that we know this section L3 and R3, we can find X in the following section, right? So let's say I will draw this out bigger, right? This is your section C3. It is L3 comma R3, right? Let's say the, in, uh, the index on the left side is left. That is your left boundary. This is N plus, how much? Uh, N plus R2 minus L2 plus sorry, r1 n plus r1 minus l1 plus 1 r2 minus l2 plus 1 right i will add an extra one to this and that is now these are inclusive right these are inclusive and your right your and your right boundary will be n minus r1 minus l1 plus n plus r2 minus l2 plus 1 and r3 minus l3 plus 1 right so now you know your x is lying somewhere here. So now you can find its gap from the left side. Now your gap will be how much? That is uh, x minus left, right? x minus left. Right? So now you know, now you know your gap of x from the left side. And as operation C3 was done on L3 comma R3, right? There will be some section L3 comma R3 here right that it that it was copied from that it was copied from right your section l3 comma r3 was copied to your section c3 so now you know your gap now you know your gap between your left side and x right so if your index is l3 uh, where will your index x lie it will obviously lie at l3 plus gap right so your index x will lie somewhere here so now you now you were able to find your index x in c3 and now you have shift shifted it leftwards, right? So basically you are now moving from your higher indexes to lower indexes. And if you can move lower and lower up to index one and n, we already know the, know the string uh, from one to n, right? So we can answer the query then, right? So that's the that's basically the solution to the problem. You will start from in, you will start from some index x. You will find which operation made this index, and you will uh, then find where it was coming from originally right because if you are using some operation you are basically copying some string so if your uh, index is lying in the segment then it was copied from somewhere then you will try to find its original position and try to find that section and then you will again do the same thing and same thing until you reach to your index one to n right so that's basically the solution so your summary is define left and right endpoints of every operation then for some query let's say query some index x try to find which operation made x right now you have find now you have found the operation that made x now shift it leftwards right that is find find from where this was copied find from where 
this was copied until you reach index 1 to n right because originally there was only one string so everything was copied from 1 to n so like source of everything is your index 1 to n so uh, uh, in the end you will ultimately reach index 1 and n you can easy and you can easily answer your query so i will give some example on this so you can understand it better uh, so let's take the example on the problem itself let's say we take the string mark We do some operation C1 at how many things we have been given 1, 4, 5, 7, and 3, 8. So we do 1, 4, 5, 7, and 3, 8. So in 1, 2, 4, we will copy mark again. In 5, 6, and we will copy mark. And in 3, 2, 8, and 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. We will do RK and mark. I think that should be correct. Let's check. Yeah. So now we have to answer some queries, right? Let, let's answer the rightmost query so we can see it better. Let's answer for um, index 12, right? Let's answer for index 12. So now I know my length here is how much. My length from this is my left hand point is 1, my right hand point is 4. My left hand point here is how much? 5. And right hand point is here how much? 8. Left hand point is here how much? 9. And right hand point is how much? 9, 10, 11. So it is 11. 8 is how much? 12. And uh, right hand point is how much? 12, 13, 14, 15, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 17. Right. So we want to answer the query for index 12. Right. So we can easily see that it is lying in uh, operation C3. That is it is lying from 12 to 17. So I can easily say that my gap is how much from the left side. My gap is how much gap is equal to 12 minus index that, that I have, right? That is left minus index. That is 12 minus 12. So my gap is zero. So I now I know it is coming from how much it is coming from the range three to eight, right? So I can mark my range three to eight here. So this is my range three. This is my range eight. So it is coming from the following range, right? It is coming from the following range. And gap is how much gap uh, gap is zero. So it is uh, so my uh, in new index is L3 my new index is equal to L3 plus gap. So that is L3 is three. My gap is zero. So my new index three is three. So you can say your index 12 is being copied from index three, right? Your index 12 is being copied from index three. So if I can find the value of index three, I can find the value of index 12. So now you want to find the value of index three and as index three is like lying uh, from one to n, we can easily say uh, that index three is how much uh, uh, the value of index three is how much index three is R. Right. So if you want to see the answer for this, it will be R, I think. Right. As you can see, the answer is R. Uh, similarly, you can do for other indices as well. Right. Uh, so let's do for one more. So let's say your string is mark. mark mar and rk mark so this is from 5 to 8 9 to 11 and 12 to 17 now you want to answer your query for index 10 let's say so now you want to answer your query for index 10 so obviously index 10 is lying here right and it, it was copied from 5 to 7 so your index 10 is lying here so how much is your gap from the left hand point your gap from the left hand point is 1 that is 10 minus 9 so it is 1 right and it is being copied from 5 to 7 so it is being copied from mar right 5 6 7 so it is being copied, copied from here so you know your gap, you know your left hand point is 5, so your new index will be L2 plus gap. Your new index will be 
L2 plus gap that is 5 plus 1 that is 6. So now you know that your uh, index 10 is being copied from index 6, right? So it is now your index is more than n, right? So you still don't know where index 6 is coming from. So you still need uh, so you still need uh, so you still need to find where index 6 is coming from. So your index 6 is lying in uh, operation C1, right? So your operation 6 is lying in index C1. So you will find the new gap. Gap will be how much? 6 minus 5, right? That will be 1. And it is being copied from 1, 4, right? So no, you know your original range. So your new index will be how much? That is left hand point of that range. That is 1 plus the gap. So that is 1 plus 1, that is 2. So now you know that in your index 6 is coming from your index 2, right? And as index 2 is lying from 1 to n, you know your value of index 2. So your answer is A. Right? And I think you will be able to see here. The answer is A itself. Right? So that is the solution. You will start, uh, you will start, uh, you will first find an operation that contains the index. And then you will keep going leftwards, try to find where it was copied from until you reach your index 1 to n. This is basically kind of BFS. Uh, like uh, not VFs like kind of, kind of DFS you can see right because every thing is coming from some other node right and every operation is kind of a node here so that was the solution to the problem uh, and if you guys want to see the code for this uh, here is the code here I am finding length here length shows the end endpoints right? uh, length is equal to endpoints of segments Or operations and your query is your LR like uh, your operation indices right this is you are doing operations on operation indices so I am taking in all the operations and I am finding the length of the segment and then using the length I am calculating the endpoints of the segment right so this is the left end point of the segment that is length of i dot first is current plus one that is the left end point and length of i dot second is the is the right endpoint of the segment. Then I will take in my queries. I will try to answer my queries. Then I will start from my last segment and try to find if the index is lying in the given segment. If index is lying in the given segment, right? If index of index is greater than or equal to the left endpoint and less than right right endpoint, then my gap is equal to how much? Index minus the left endpoint. That is length of i dot first. And then my new index will be how much? Query of i dot first. That is uh, the L index of the query plus the gap. So that is how I'll shift my index to the left side. And in the end, my answer will be how much? It will be just S of index minus one right? because our, our string is zero indexed. So that is how the problem will be solved. And if you guys have a doubt, do let me know, or you can join my Discord server and I'll be more than happy to help you help you there. Also, if you guys don't know, Continue Newton School is offering a full stack development course. The course is uh, over six months long and it is totally based on pay after placement model and you don't have to pay anything there is zero hidden fees there is zero upfront fees and they are granting you a minimum package of rupees 5 lakhs and the average package is rupees 7 lakhs and the highest package is over rupees 26 lakhs so it is a very great opportunity also all their mentors are from top mncs like google flipkart zomato etc also they will get you placed into the top mncs as well like google flipkart zomato uh, so uh, you can learn from the mentors that are working at those companies and you can land a job at those companies yourselves Also, you don't need to worry if you guys think that yeah, I don't have coding, I don't have a fresher, I don't have a fresher The course is over 6 months long and they will teach you from scratch So you can still sign up for this and if you guys are looking for a career in the tech field This is a very, uh, this is a very great head start that you should sign up for And if you uh, want to land a job, I highly uh, I highly vouch for this and uh, if you guys want to sign up there will be a link down below and you can go and sign up from there so yeah be sure to sign up for this and I will see you in the next video bye bye